Uh, my ex girlfriend has brother cousins. Mm. Yup, that happened. Mm. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? You know what time it is. Welcome to the Trinity Force Podcast. Optimus Tom, Resident AP, plays mid and his thighs are shady. Got a syndrome, can't nerf it. You can find him in the chat, type of worth it. And that's Hornet, sucking evil hell. Thought it was going up, once again it fell. Never spent a single dime on LOL. And if you step into his jungle, expect a brawl. All slander, math specialist. He's precise, doesn't tolerate estimates. The man's addicted by every hero. You can tell because his bank account's stuck at zero. At last but not least, your host, Pornophobia. Picks an 80 carry, and he's on ya. He's got the full mouth, ground and pound. Don't get excited, it's not as sexy as it sounds. That's your whole team. Enjoy the podcast. Put your headphones on, we'll have a blast. We'll check your email and Twitter, of course. Just don't ask us how four guys make a try for us. Thanks for listening to the Trinity Force podcast brought to you by Audible.com, your premier website for audiobook downloads. Are you interested in trying Audible? Head on over to www.audibletrial.com slash podcast to sign up for a 30-day, no-question-asked free trial of Audible. If you sign up using the aforementioned URL, you will instantly gain one free credit, which will allow you to download such books as Game of Thrones, The Hunger Games, or any Stephen King novel. Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. You're listening to episode number 47. My name is Ponophobia. I am your host, as always, as I say every single week. I am unfortunately not joined by Dirt Oslander this week, as he is under the weather. Weather? Weather? <laughs> He's under the weather. Can I have a redo on that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> under the weather. Oh, under the weather. I'm not from the uh, East Coast, so I don't talk with a crazy accent. The only thing we do here is screw our cousins or brothers, <laughs> sisters, or whatever. Mm. Um, <laughs> that was Optimus Tom. Yeah, it was, and I, I was like half asleep at the start of this call, but now I've, my interest has suddenly been peaked. Is this your proclivity? proclivity much like Sotir's foot fetish? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> let's let's go back to the foot fetish thing. I just mentioned I had seen some things on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean I have a fetish. Nope, automatic stigma. Bam. Attached. <laughs> That's right. That's satire, the foot fetish master. <laughs> satire. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, you You're heard done. the voice of, you heard the voice of Sotir talking about his uh, fetish of foots, and then Andy or Hornet is with us. <laughs> What's going what? on, people? No, I, we uh, we bypassed your intro because you know, once we attach the foot <laughs> fetish thing, then you know, maybe your insert mouth and foot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good one oh, out of you. Funny. Yeah, as you guys, you probably listened last week. We had, you know, three of us on. It was kind of a throwback week because Optimus Tom is every other week, and so Tier can't keep time, so he didn't come <laughs> in until later in the podcast. But like, apparently, this week we're more important than Wings. Yeah, I keep on telling you Wednesday is Wing Night. Last <laughs> week I was just really dumb, um, which also happens, I guess, on Tuesdays <laughs> and Wednesdays. Well, so every day of the week. Yeah, basically. So how's that M5 article coming? Um, That M5 article is coming along smashingly. I actually just checked my due date and realized, thankfully, it's one of the last ones out of the hatch. So I have <laughs> plenty of time to work on that, perfect it, if you will. Um, but we already have a couple of really good articles, previews out there, and they've been you know, pretty well received so far. Yeah, for those of you, of you who may just grab the podcast off of iTunes. By the way, I can't speak tonight. For whatever reason, I cannot enunciate any words, so I apologize. I'm doing that. But for those of you who just grabbed this podcast off of iTunes, ggchronicle.com has a season two preview series of every single team that's going to be in the championships. And so far, we have CLG Prime, SK Gaming, Zubu Frost, World Elite, and what's the last one? Somebody help me out here. There's Taipei one more. Assassins? Taipei Assassins. That's it. I knew there was five. So there's five of them up there. By the time you listen to this podcast, we'll have a couple more out and ready to go. I believe, like Dignitas, uh, Azu, uh, not Azu Blaze, Najin Sword, Najin Sword will be up there. I mean, Team Solo Mid, Moscow Five, CLG EU is up. I believe actually on Wednesday, so the day after you listen to this podcast, you'll have already read CLG Europe, and Andy's working on that one. 
Yeah, that one's, man, I'll tell you what, there's a whole lot of information in trying to put it into a, uh, a reasonable setup for all of you guys to read and, and have a concise listing for is, is not exactly the easiest thing in the world, let me tell you. But uh, I also recommend that, you know, there are some Asian teams uh, and other teams that may not be known to most of the community and, and you know, look forward to those as well, especially from uh Invictus Gaming uh who I really believe might be a dark horse in the season 2 world finals and a couple others so make sure you guys check it out um it's going it's going to be really really um we're really proud of this we're really happy with how the articles have gone uh I believe CLG and SK were were absolutely smashing successes um and the rest of them have been very, very, very good. So uh, we've put a lot of research in it, a lot of time. And we've had one of the most incredible editors in the world looking over all of them. Oh, so uh, uh, shout out to Tristan. He's done us a, a, really? a really, really good service for, by doing this. So Yeah, for any of those guys, you guys who have started thinking about starting up a website or anything, get an editor for your website. It oh, has my been God. so great. Because having somebody else with fresh eyes look over your article, not only fixing any of your typos and mistakes but actually adding to the article and the contents of it from you know their personal experiences or just understanding how the english language works because they can drop a thesaurus on top of your head it's just it's so much better i've i've probably added an extra 500 words thanks to having to go over my article already and of course i'm running team solo mid which will be out on friday yeah it's a lot better (laughs) than using that little paperclip guy that comes at microsoft word (laughs) clippy (laughs) you know clippy's my man god i hated clippy one most of, the, of us, most of us, just use Google Docs now. Yeah, really. I mean, just, <laughs> just, yeah. Screw the Microsoft stuff if I can. I don't, I don't mean to really bang on them that bad, but yeah, just, oh, the more Microsoft <laughs> stuff I can get, it, I could kill the, the better off. Can I have a Linux server, please? Not have uh, Windows errors. You know, sorry, that's a debate <laughs> for another day. Oh, you and I could sit here and complain about how badly our w- uh, Windows configurations have been in the past. And by the way, I should I should mention uh, to switch subjects a little bit because I know a lot of you want to know about the skin contest and oh, what man. the what the correct answers might be. We had a lot of feedback. Uh, I believe there are 33 of you that correct guess the correctly guessed three out of four skins, but only one of you was actually able to guess all four. Uh, Dan, I'd like to congratulate you on doing that. Uh, most of you got the. The usual three, which is Unchained Alistar, which you get through liking Riot on Facebook. Is it, is it Facebook for Alistar, I believe? YouTube, Riot is, Riot you t- is on Facebook. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, Tristana, Riot Girl Tristana, Judgment Kale, which, or as a lot of people like to call Welfare Kale. Yeah. And the, the last one was a bit tricky. That's why I felt I could put this out there as a, as a contest. Uh, I, I forget which magazine it was. It was a PC Gamer, I believe, yeah. that ran ran a uh, a full article on League of Legends and the entire game itself for all of those uh, reading uh, PC yeah, it was Gamer. A, it was a Dominion preview, if I remember. Correctly. Was it? It's right. It was a Dominion preview. You're right. That um, turned out well. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but in the back of that. In that part- in those particular issues were uh, Arctic Warfare Caitlyn as a skin, and the only reason I actually got a hold of that was because of a reader of a former website was kind enough who did not play League of Legends uh, to pass on his code because he wasn't going to use it, but he was a, a subscription member to PC Gamer. Uh, sent it on to me. I was allowed to use it, and I did not own Caitlyn at the time, so it actually was nice and unlocked. Unlocked Caitlyn as a champion and gave me the skin. So those are the four skins I own. Congratulations, Dan. You win the RP card. Um, as far as the 32 other of you that, that actually guessed correctly for three of the four, uh, Michael Metcalf, I will send you a Riot Nasus skin um, that I don't own, but you will now be a proud winner, a proud owner of. So um, I will send that <laughs> along to you as soon as I can. Yep, and we went to random.org, put all you guys' names in a big old pile, n- number than one to 32, ran random.org, and that's the number that came up. I don't remember what number it was. Number it really seven matter. was Michael Metcalf. Lucky oh, number person. seven. Lucky number seven. That's so congratulations, right. sir. 
Yes, congratulations. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast, and I hope that we have brought hours of enjoyment to your ears. It's funny how many listeners have been adding me recently on Twitter and in game. I actually get yelled at every day by a friend of mine um, who is a female. She thinks it's hilarious how many quote-unquote fans that I have, how many fans (laughs) we have for the podcast. And she always gets upset with me because she's like, you're not that popular. Why do people like you? Why do people listen to you? And I say, I I don't know. I don't know why people listen to me. <laughs> well, it's, is, is it is it too nerdy to actually try and explain to her that you play a game and that you talk about it? And then is is that? Uh, no, I have. She understands the podcast and she understands why. She just likes to make fun of me about it. But okay, to take this a step further, she actually messaged one of her friends that she I think she grew up with and said, "Hey, I know you play League. Have you listened to the Trinity Force podcast? Yeah, I know Ponophobia and Hornet. Da 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 da. I listen to them every week." And she's like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> <laughs> see that's the best when it gets back to her you're just like mm, you know shrug your shoulders and yeah you're uh, you know let me brush my shoulders off a little bit you know it, it, it happens yes it did see that's good that that's how you get her back right there oh every time well it's, it, what's the most fun for me is when you guys actually say on twitter hey i enjoy the podcast and i, I love hearing the feedback for any of our episodes so please, feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com, at tforcepodcast, or even follow me personally at SK Pone. I'm probably most active on Twitter out of any of these guys here. And I love hearing all your feedback, and I love to retweet it. I love to listen to you guys. I love playing games with all our fans. So we wouldn't be here without you guys. So if you want to play, go ahead and add me in game, Ponophobia. I'll more than likely accept, and we'll play games. I'll teach you guys. You can ask any of our other fans. Hell, I'd, I actually actively you know, want my fans to write in and tell me about how great the games were that we played together, even if they were troll games. So I can tell everyone else, you know, that we give back to the community. That's, that's what we're here for. And again, that audible thing you guys hear in the beginning of this podcast, we use that money to give back to you guys, like the riot skins and stuff we purchased with that money that you guys helped us with. Yeah. There's nothing going in our pockets. I promise. That's, that's not why we do it. We just, uh, we, we do enjoy doing this. Although, I, I sometimes wonder if Optimus Tom enjoys doing other things more importantly than, than this podcast. <laughs> listen, but you know. listen, I can't always take time out of my, my night just to sit on Skype and talk to a bunch of friends about games we played. <laughs> Why not? That's what I do every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. So, en- enough with the giant circle jerk. I just really wanted to thank everybody for listening and all that. I don't feel like I do it enough, you know. Please continue to subscribe to us on iTunes on all that good stuff. But moving on, I think we should talk some stuff about the game. What do you guys think? Maybe. Sure. Maybe. So we've got Season 2 coming up right now. And, of course, Syndra and Rengar are banned out in Season 2. What I want to bring up the question is, how do you guys feel the Season 2 championships? What do you feel the guys are, what do you guys feel Season 2 champions are going to bring in terms of champions we haven't seen before, combinations we haven't seen before. What do you expect out of the Season 2 championships? And I'll leave that open to the first person I'd like to speak. So I think Tom should go to that. Yep. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We got Invictus Gaming. This is going to be so exciting. Invictus Gaming. Oh, I think okay. I've said this like three times so far in the podcast in total, where Invictus Gaming is one of the most creative teams and one of the most feared teams by at least the North American squads because they really don't know what they're going to throw at them. I do know mm-hmm. that teams have been pra- had practice with them for PAX Prime just because they knew that they'd come up with weird combinations and they'd get the reactions down. So they would know what happens if someone tried to throw one of those quote-unquote cheese strategies at them. I believe we saw a show match between them and uh, Zubu Blaze as well as them and CLG, uh, CLG Prime where they were running things like Karma. They were running things like solo mid APE. They had tri lanes they had you know dual lanes in the mid lane like we'd seen some of the korean teams running they have so many wacky things that i just want to watch all the invictus games just (laughs) to see people's reactions to it because no one's going to expect it no one's going to know what's going on not even the casters are going to know what's going on which is going to be awesome i love it when teams make me speechless but uh i don't know i think it's just going to be it's going to be really entertaining (laughs) group stages definitely you have to remember everything's going to be best of one in those group stages. So if you can pull out basically two victories, you're almost guaranteed first or second place in that group stage. So. And the crazy thing is, is, is to me in the group stages, it for a world championships, it seems so short that you only play one game versus each of these teams. But that also means you pull out all your stops. There's nothing you leave in the bag in these games because you have to pull out everything. And I'm, you know, 
a lot of team, a lot of people are saying, you know, okay, I think Saigon Jokers is a team that's going to be outmatched when they come into this, in, into this thing. Um, we have no idea what to expect from IG, as you said, but you know, I kind of expect one of one of the major teams to pull out some cheese and and do something different, like CLG Prime did to their sister team CLG EU when they pulled out the promote and decided to, that they were going to mm-hmm. try and cheese them, you know, in, into a into a different way of winning the game. I just think that that everything's on the table because of of the stakes that are involved, and there is nothing that you can put past anybody in in this tournament i just think that all the stops are going to be pulled especially in the group stages i feel like in a best of three you can make at least a little bit of adjustments but in the group stages when you only play one game versus each of the other teams it's so magnified that that i'm, I'm really looking forward to it it's going to be a lot of fun i'm it's one of those things where they're starting the schedule on october 4th i feel like i should just take the day off of work it's just like I want to watch all these games be, between the Thursday and the Friday, which I think are October fourth and October fifth. Um, there's not a game that I don't want to see. Like every game is intriguing to me for this grouping. Right. Yeah, I've already got the thirteenth off, which is a Friday, if I remember correctly. Mm. Uh, either the twelfth or thirteenth. So I have the finals off. Actually, I've got a friend coming down from Michigan, and we're gonna spend the weekend playing games and watching the finals in the big screen. But now that you bring that up about to take it off for that weekend, I might have to take that Friday off too, that previous one. <laughs> that, just sit around the house and just watch. Yeah. It's 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 actually I I think I want to actually take my laptop connected to my my big screen TV and just watch the games like as I would. Like I would love I, I too bad I live in a in an area where I don't think it'll be close enough to any kind of event where they'd put this on like screens at a bar. Because I would, <laughs> I would seriously consider doing that. Like maybe, if if I if I knew that say Optimus Tom was going to be in the area and say New York City, then I'd go meet him up there to go watch it up there. Because I'm pretty sure some some place around there is going to have the showing. But uh, uh, Tom, I believe you're going, correct? Uh, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, so it's one of those things where you know I'd love to go out someplace and watch it with like-minded fans and meet some of you guys. But it's. Man, I'm excited. This is this is. Uh, I really give credit because the it, the hype has built itself. It really has for for everything set up, all the money involved, all the emotions that we've already seen for teams that qualified for this tournament. Uh, th- this is this is this is the best. This is what I could I could possibly ask for as far as an esport goes. I really got to keep stroking our own EP, and I'm pretty sure we're attributing to a lot of that hype coming to season two championships with our because <laughs> those, those articles have been so well written and then you're learning so much about each team especially like taipei assassins obscure because just disgusting love for that team you know undying love for that team has made me fall in love with them no matter how poorly they played in the last tg classic like i just want to see a korean team or you know asian team however you want to put it just do so well in this tournament and what, what makes me fearful is that I actually wanted to see Taipei Assassins in the group stage just because I wanted to see them more. Like, I, I, we got to talk about this, by the way. The the drawing for the buys was the worst thing that I have ever seen for randomizing who gets a number one seed because it was $50,000 on a random ball. I, that that dry that drives me nuts. That you oh, that's yeah. fifty thousand dollars on a random ball to see who gets the number one seeds, and it turns out that a Zubu Frost, who I'd actually like to see more of, is in the group stages. But I wanted to see a team like Taipei Assassins more because you don't get to see them that often. You get to see the Green League, I understand that. Um, but Taipei Assassins are world elite. It would have been awesome to see them in the group stages so you could see more play, you know, more games from them, and see what they what they would bring when when it matters the most. But it is what it is, and and you know I understand the bind that that Riot was put in once the once the number one seeds were announced. So it happens, but I'm really looking forward to those kind of things. Yeah, How I mean, about you, Sotir? What what do you feel? Oh, I'm looking forward to all of the games. I mean, everyone's already been kind of gushing about it. I mean, the previews we're doing are obviously nice, and I think that should inform people and allow them to make uh, better educated bets, <laughs> which I think should be a big topic <laughs> um, going forward. Who is betting on oh, what? Yes. And we need to start a pool for the GG Chronicle or just the <laughs> podcast crew. But, like, I look at the, the groups, and, you know, they're, you know, the Saigon Jokers are kind of like the team out there that's probably seen as like the weak link but in group a sk gaming 
would be, in my opinion, the weakest you know team there. But of course, they're all going to be best of ones, as you guys mentioned. And I, you know, they're obviously committed to this. They're devoted to this. This is their life. They can certainly pick strategies that are going to, you know, sneak them a win or two and perhaps get through. And now, of course, everyone's going to be trying to defend against said strategies and make their own strategies that guarantee them advancement throughout the tournament. Uh, so it's really going to be a big mind game and everyone has so long to prepare. And now that we're like in the top echelon of, you know, of competitive teams, not just like the top echelon of, you know, players in the world, but the top echelon of the actual competitive teams, you know, we're going to see we should see very close, you know, abilities mechanically. Um, so it's going to be a lot about the planning and the strategy and much of that is going to happen, you know, before the people even start playing the game. So I'm super excited to see uh, interesting things coming out there. As Tom mentioned, Invictus Gaming should have something up their sleeve, but uh, likewise, Zubu Frost, CLGNA, and SK Gaming, like that whole group needs something special to bring. And really everyone needs to bring something special if they expect to advance and yeah, there are going to be so many good games. And, and and isn't it ironic that even with SK Gaming, you know, they may be perceived the weakest in the group, but you don't have much to go off of as far as what game what gameplay you've seen from them. It is right. you see the the qualifiers for them in Europe, but I think that's it. That's that's all you got for as far as what they will do, which means. The, they're one of the teams that are sneaky enough that they have an open bag. The same thing with Invictus Gaming. You don't have that many. You you don't have that much knowledge of their of their gameplay, and, and they could they could bring out just about anything from training. Whereas there's a bunch of stuff on Frost and CLG Prime that you kind of wonder, you know, are they going to be able to plan specifically like SK did for CLG EU? Because SK's new lineup brought something completely different after just manhandling CLGAU in the qualifiers that, you know, did nothing that they could have seen or expected because they had no clue it was coming. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, I expect surprises in this tournament. I expect, like, there's going to be a surprise team that comes out of these group stages that we don't expect, whether it's a, um, you know, Group B is 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 really interesting. Try and pick two out of the three between Dignitas, CLGAU, and Nanjin Sword. That's not easy because Nanjin Sword uh, came through the qualifiers like really hard in Korea to qualify for this tournament specifically. Uh, they lost to CLGEU in the summer uh, championship uh, that, that OGN runs, but they then look like they're even better now than they were in that matchup. So I, good luck picking this because I think this is going to be really, really tough. I don't yeah. know. Dignitas keeps writing very detailed articles about their own specific players. <laughs> it's going to be their own doing. So. <laughs> well, I feel like all the the you know well known teams like Moscow Five and TSM, like we're we're going into this thinking, okay, well they're just good. They're just going to stick what's been working with them. And you know we've been seeing a lot of you know the same thing for a while for them. Very vanilla in the past couple like online tournaments and whatnot. And of Clearly, they're just practicing. It's like preseason football. What we've been seeing for the past month is like preseason football. All these teams don't want to give their cards away, don't want to show their hand, playing mm -hmm. very vanilla, very basic. But I suspect even the really great teams who probably, you know, the fans feel like they could get by just based on their, you know, mechanical ability and their, you know, cohesion as a team are probably planning something tricky as well because so much is riding on it and no one is guaranteed these victories, obviously. But even pulling out the trickiness... You know, how confident can you be that these crazy strategies are going to actually work? Uh, I mean, let's say you throw five people mid and try to push the tower out by teleporting on the minion the entire time, but now you made it to late game because the other team played so well, you have five teleports and no exhaust. You know what I'm saying? Can you can you really risk to go with all these really high-risk um, comps to go into this tournament like this? See, I think everything's on the table. Like, And, and I think if you stay in a passive mode playing for the late game, I could see it just passing you by and getting out of control before you're ready because it's, and this, this will come up in my CLG EU article in that CLG EU always plays for the late game. But recently they've been tricked up by teams getting them in the early game and with different strategies to do it. It's been a different strategy that say Moscow five pulled off in, in, in ECC Poland or that SK pulled off in the European qualifier or that uh, Zubu, Zubu Frost ended up pulling off to change uh, 
an O2, a down O2 deficit to come all the way back and win the summer championships in Korea and OGN. So you got to you got to be prepared for all that might come and yes if if all things are equal you want to have the better late game comp but i don't think all things are going to be equal and i th- expect there to be more uh daring challenges like how sk played against clgau with nothing to lose you got to go for everything and go for broke there's definitely yeah. going to be um a little bit of mix up going into especially in the group stage games there's going to be mix ups being thrown in and i think i did this in an in the zone video before mlg rally i was talking about different kinds of cheese and how you could compare the two different ones there's like all in strategies like you're talking about with running you know like five teleports and teleporting to minions or wards and then if it hits a certain point in the game your strategy is pretty much just done but um I think it was based off one of the strategies that Team Black did at the League of Legends arena for MLG, where they ran two teleports and like pulled the crates from behind the mid tower at level one and then sieged the tower down in the first three minutes. Like you're gonna see goofy things like that. You're gonna see awkward timings uh, for blue buffs, like giving the first blue buff to a mid laner to generate some sort of advantage. He can take an early mm-hmm. dragon. You're probably going to see, you could see a mid lane and a top lane running teleport to gain map control at certain key moments when they want to try to force team fights. Or you could see them running, you know, that awkward, let's push this first tower down in the first two and a half minutes by giving the mid lane and the top lane teleport and then dispersing back to your lane assignments. And all of a sudden you have like, like a twisted fade or some, or an Ari in the mid lane who's capable of very much so roaming around the map easily and then you have an advantage generated somewhere where the team's completely on the back foot but you could still play standard and you're not going to see a lot of all-in stuff even when you have awkward champion choices like an ap ap mid ye or something along those lines you're going to see like little subtle tweaks and timing differences in gameplay and i think that's what's really going to catch off guard a lot of these teams like you're mentioning clg eu the sk did it to them they automatically right. went in and invaded their jungle like five seconds before the blue buff would spawn and they caught frog and then they caught snoop a and like they just killed them and took the blue buffs away they did that constantly and they did not stop doing it so little little changes to standard gameplay like that i think we're going to see a ton of those all ch- all out cheese strategies like the like, complete teleport or like rush five men mid or like camp in a bush and try to get a level one kill like curse sometimes does well, we uh-huh. might see stuff like that, especially, you know, out of some of those teams you may expect to be, quote unquote, the weaker teams. But all in all, it's going to be it's going to be good League of Legends. <laughs> in the regionals, that's the, best, that's the best thing. Good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is the best thing. In the regionals, I was very surprised that like so many people were playing so vanilla and not being aggressive. And I, you know, I am fearful we're going to have some of that because when the teams tend to go to lands, I mean, not all teams, obviously, some teams, you know. I mean, and all these teams have experience in lands, but some teams go and are a little bit more nervous, and some teams go and are, feel like they're at home, like Moscow 5, for instance. Um, hmm. But regardless, like, when the stakes do rise up, there is, you know, a little bit of a heavier burden, I guess, on the shoulders of the players. No one wants to make a mistake, so they play more and more passive. Um, and I think we saw that out of TSM a little bit in some recent online tournaments where there's like, oh, well, we just want to... Actually, I guess it was in the regionals where there's like, okay, we just want to play you know, play our game but not go really aggressive early on because we know if we play very aggressively, then we have a chance of that turning around on us and doing poorly. But if we just play, you know, very passive standard, we feel like our skills are going to come through in the end. Um, So I hope we don't see too much of that. I mean, I enjoy games regardless of how they go, if there's early aggression or if it's a farm fest or, or whatnot, because everything is... Everything is beautiful in this wonderful game we play, but uh, but I hope there's not. I hope there's diversity. I hope we see some farm fest and some like kind of wacky games. But I want to I want to mention though before we get to that, you also mentioned before how there's a lot a lot more equality for the class that we're going to see of teams in this tournament, and I think that is what's going to make people or, or, or teams actually take a bigger chance. Uh, as, and I think some of the bigger teams are going to take bigger chances. It would not surprise me if Chowster has something up his sleeve for CLG Prime against like an Azubu Frost. It would not surprise me one bit if they if they show something completely different that they hadn't shown before. Um, you know, like giving Chowster uh, Janna and telling him to go play 2v1 or, you know, something, something crazy to that effect. Like it just, it just wouldn't surprise me one bit. Uh, and then 
I would I would kind of be a little down if it was no if there was no cheese. I want to mm-hmm. see cheese. I really do. I want I want to see I want to see teams go for broke and go for it all. And when you only have three games to play in the group stages, I think you have to. Yeah. I guess go big or go home, right? Right. Gonna, exactly. Yeah, big unless you bet big. It's really the what what we've been working off of every week. I know last week we talked a lot about the gambling aspect of it. So Tier had brought it up earlier in this podcast. I would really I would really like to see some of this going down, especially between us, like you had mentioned before. So <laughs> why don't we do some why don't we do some early predictions? Who think who's gonna win? Who is taking home the gold? Wait, wait. Why don't, why don't you start with group stages first? Because it's it's we gotta go there first, and then from there you go. We don't know how okay. the the, <laughs> the regional buys well, are gonna be no, sectioned. No, I, I understand what you're saying, but I wanted I wanted who do you think is making it out of the group stage and going home with gold? That's that's the only question that I cared to answer right now. All right, who's uh, winning group stages? Okay, I'll start. I think I think at a group A, I think Frost and I think Invictus Gaming are actually gonna come out of that group. And I think Frost is going to be a contender to either make the semis or the finals, uh, depending on who they run into in in the uh, quarterfinals. Or actually, I I think it it's going to be because you don't know the quarterfinal semifinal draw um, at all. But I do believe Frost is going to be a contender in the B group. I think it's going to be EU, and I think it's going to be Najin Sword. I think Najin Sword's really hot. Um, I think Mach Noon is playing out of his world at the moment. Uh, making amazing plays with all kinds of different champions. And so if Najin Sword draws a team like Moscow 5, I would not put it past that they're able to actually beat Moscow 5 and move on. Um, I like, I think the Korean teams are, are that much stronger in some cases. Um, I don't think they'll meet in the finals. I think there will be a, a top seed like a Moscow 5 that'll have a different draw that'll be able to make it there because I think Moscow 5 has everything going for them as far as how their teamwork has gone. So I'll say Moscow 5 against Azubu Frost in the finals, and I'll say Moscow 5 takes it. All right. Uh, so, Tier, give me your predictions. Ha, a win, Tom. Oh, um, for the group yeah. A, I think. You know, first, I would like to mention that for whatever reason, like the entirety of GG Chronicle has like this Asian bias. Like all, everyone's <laughs> always like, "Oh, all the Korean teams are gonna win. All the Asian teams are gonna win." I'm like, "Really?" And and yes, they are. They are good, and they are. You know, they were devoting a lot of time and practice and had schedules that you know certainly were better than what the Americans had a while back. But now, now I think it's evening out. I'm going to take CLG NA and Azubu Frost out of Group A, um, Dignitas and CLG EU out of Group B. I also have Moscow 5 taking it all the way. I mean, I would love to see something different, um, but I just feel like they're kind of the cream of the crop right now. And I don't, I mean, certainly everyone everyone can lose and everyone can win, um, but I think they're the odds on favorites. Oh, All right, man. Tom, it's on you, buddy. This is awkward because my real predictions match Hornets, and then the fake predictions I was going to make to be different from him match Soter's. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna have to... Uh, I'm going to be the real wild card here. Out of Group A, we're going to have CLG Prime, and we're going to have Invictus Gaming moving on. And then Ooh. in Group B, we're going to have CLG EU and Saigon Jokers. Oh, no way. <laughs> There's no way Saigon Jokers is making it on the group stage. I'm sorry, Tom. You're, and then, you, you've been and then hold on, hold on. <laughs> and then uh, I don't know how the, the other rounds are going to boil down, but when it comes to the finals, the finals, it doesn't matter who's in it because TSM is going to win. Mm. Day life. Yeah. Big TSM fanboy there. Well, you know what? <laughs> I agree with some of your points. I believe CLG NA and Victus Gaming are going to make it out of group A. I know Frost has been very powerful, but I believe that uh, Invictus and CLGNA will be able to take it much over them. However, on the opposite side, CLGEU and Najin Sword, easily. I don't believe Dignitas has what it takes to beat either of those teams um, mm. solidly. But in the finals, I do believe it's going to come down to a Moscow 5 TSM finals, and I'm going to go with... I'm not a bro. I'm not in the Bay life, but I believe TSM is going to take it this season. Oh, it's like you mm. wrote their article or something. going through reading everything watching the tsm vods that i've been watching reading everything about them and how well they've done i've mentioned it before i well i want to say i mentioned the last week i don't remember if i did it on or off air but tsm has taken a first place at every single land they have attended besides the um mlg summer arena 
which wasn't like a major tournament. So every major tournament land, they've taken first place since they've got Dyrus in their team. And I believe they learned something when they played against the Zubu Blaze in that summer arena and how to play against the Korean teams. And once they are met with any of them, I believe they're going to win and go on to face the Russians in the finals. I was about to say, this is my one problem with TSM. TSM is always one step behind when it comes to adjusting to whatever the new meta is. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you've seen it, and, and what they've done is I think they've had these invitational tournaments in the hopes that they might catch on to anything new that might come in from playing in these invitational tournaments that they're doing. But that worries me because they've only faced one Asian team. They've never faced uh, any of the others that I believe. I mean, they've, they haven't touched any of these Asian teams, never played any of these Asian teams as far as we know, unless they've scrimmed against them at some point or another. They, uh, I actually heard when, uh, when I was at MLG, when TSM was not there, that th- since they had no practice partners, they were scrimming against Invictus the entire huh. weekend. Okay. So that, you know, and, and that's what, that's Invictus's new lineup. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, maybe, maybe that happened. That's of course a rumor though. I mean, we, you know, we don't know for sure, but you know, I'm I'm worried about them running into one of the Asian teams that they don't have any experience with, finding out that there's a new comp that that ends up destroying them or or, or you know kind of backlashes them all of a sudden, uh, like Moscow Five did to them in Kiev, which was, wasn't you know back in January. I, that that kind of stuff worries me about TSM. I worry about their adjustments to what they need to make, and in a three game series. That can happen so quick, and I'm 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 actually afraid for who they might match up against. But you got to look back over at MLG Providence when they uh, was it Providence? Yes, Providence when they faced off against CLG NA to take it back, reset the bracket, win, and they learned from CLG Anaheim. Thank you. I'm, I always get the MLGs um, confused. It's about the spring Providence championships. Kia. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the one where they actually came back, reset the bracket against CLG CLG NA, and won. That's where they you know released their Karthus Kale combination there where they would just alt Karthus with the Kale alt and he'd walk in and destroy the team. They started banning Shen against um, I believe Hotshot was still top at that time. And they were uh, banning they started banning Shen against him. No. And, Hazard and Hazard was the sub and that's why I'd like to actually was point that, out oh, is okay. that X Hazard was subbing in that grouping so I'm not sure that TSM really played their best matches in that in that uh in that tournament. I mean, that was Anaheim was by far the best uh, grouping of teams that TSM won and participated against because CLG EU was also there, but they they had you know Blaze crushed them, and I don't know if that was a plan on their part or not, just to see what would happen. But it wasn't. I don't feel like those games were actually that close, even though people say they were close. They didn't win one of them. They didn't win one of those games. That bothers me a little bit, and and. Going against Frost or Najin Sword or, or other teams that they may, I don't even know if they scrimmed against them at all, but, you know, it, it, all it takes is, an, is a new a new combination of champions that they're not used to or prepared for that actually, you know, get, passes them by and the next thing you know, they're done. Like Diana. Like, like Diana. Diana. Yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, they don't really have a good record against, you know, the Eastern Asian teams or really the, I mean, the Euro- Eastern European teams really the European teams, I mean, they've been stomping the North American scene in the lands, but beyond that, right. obviously, this is a whole new ball game. And, of course, they were stomping CLG when they were remaking, and Hotshot has made leaps and bounds to become a better jungler. Boy, boy, nice. you know, much better than x I mean, no offense to x He actually played wonderfully in Anaheim, but obviously Boy, boy is a step up, especially when you have, you know, weeks and upon months to practice with them. Um, so the level of competition TSM is facing is going to certainly be a lot higher. I mean, I would certainly put them as, you know, since I have Moscow 5 is winning, I would have, you know, TSM in second place or, you know, the second highest odds to win. But, you know, that's with a lot of trepidation I'd say that because they haven't, you know, really competed against these people, against these top teams, you know, incredibly well. And I, and everyone's kind of writing Dignitas off, but I think they're the most likely to bring something cheesy out, uh, you know, just like they did in uh-huh. Kiev with the, you know, protect the AD carry, three supports um, strategy. I mean, I think they're the most likely to bring something out again, and I think that will, you know, that certainly could bring them through the group stages, and I think it will. That was the classic heel comp, right? Right. It was Lulu, okay. Soraka mid, and I, I 
Yeah, I think they swapped up their their bottoms, but it was like Tarek or Janna or whatever. Wasn't that uh? Wasn't that IPL four? Was it IPL four? I thought it was actually in Kiva, but you could certainly be right. And I remember like the only way people you know beat it was just banning it out. And of course, those champions have been nerfed. But have they actually been nerfed all that much that you can't pull out a very similar strat again? I don't know. I don't know. Ask and Team the, Black. It, they love solo mid Soraka. <laughs> I'll tell you the one thing that I really like is that um, the teams, you know, we've had a lot of changes on rosters uh, for some of these teams. Dignitas and Prime and Curse all did a switch, you know, in, in the middle of there. But I I like the teams that, that have been consistently together for a long time, and that's CLGU and Moscow 5. I think playing together for as long as they have, and I think being able to adjust on the fly when they need to, or know each other's strengths and weaknesses is going to be a huge advantage for this, and that's the that's the one thing that um, can bother me. The only reason I think Invictus Gaming is getting out of their group is because I don't think anybody knows what they're bringing, and I think that could be a real detriment to teams like SK or CLG Prime to not know what's coming. But when it comes down to it, I think for making deep runs, and TSM also fits in this because TSM's been with Dyrus since, I believe, March. So put that all together, the teams that, that have the most continuity from having the same team together for the longest amount, I think is really going to work in their favor when it comes to a huge, huge match like this. So what are my odds for betting on the Saigon Jokers? Very good. I would give you a thousand to one. No, I'd give you a thousand to one. What? Nice. I would place that bet. You would not do that because everyone would just bet a dollar. I mean, That's I guess. That's true. I can't, I can't pay. I can't pay. What like, if I bet you know, like, like 50 bucks then? Yeah, I'd be rich. I'm pretty sure it's fifty dollars in my pocket. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, no challenge. I I I feel like you'd uh, you'd be betting on the Cleveland Browns to win the Super Bowl at that point. I mean, that's 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 how bad I I think the odds are for them to actually win. I don't I don't think they're very good at all. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. I'm actually looking wanna... forward to see who uh, who busts out Jungle Shaco. Because a lot of people have been playing it in solo queue, whether it be CLG, whether it be some of the Asian teams. I don't know who's going to do it, but someone's going to play Shaco, and no one's going to be ready for it. See, I, the one thing is, is that the one the one thing about Shaco is, is when you have great team coordination, you can really shut down a Shaco. I feel, I feel like you're able to keep you know track of vision, and it's not to say that he can't affect an early game. And, and what we've been saying is that someone taking a real huge leap and bound in the early game and then just, just snowballing it quickly. But I, the, the better team coordination is why I don't think we've, we've seen Shaco in a long time because I think if, if a, good, a good team coordinates well, they don't have problems with him at all. I, I mean, he opens up a lot of things for your team. I mean, I think his team fighting presence is actually underrated. You can just build him a little bit more tanky. He actually can get sneak in there. But obviously he has a split pushing. He takes objectives so fast. He can solo dragon much better than essentially any other jungler out there. Can, you know, help take those early barons as well. I mean, I, I'm with Tom. I would not be surprised if we saw it. And I think it would be pretty hard to deal with. Um, he just brings you a lot of options. And yeah, maybe he's not stellar at the team fight aspect, but right now, you know, all the junglers we see are these utility junglers who are really there for, you know, CC and their, you know, sport items that they're going to wear. They're not really there for the damage or, you know, they are there for the damage soak, but it takes them a long time to get to that point. So mm -hmm. I don't really think he compares too poorly as compared to them. So. With Tom and also Cleveland Browns, two hundred one odds to win the uh, Super Bowl this year. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the highest for any NFL team? Uh, yeah, they're tied with the Jacksonville Jaguars, yeah, Dolphins, there you go. Colts, so on. Yep. I take a Jaguars bet. <laughs> you were. You can bet not with a very me. Good I'll, I'll be your man, bookie you, for that one too. No, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'll be oh, I'll be your bookie for that one. Just just send me the money. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'll spread it out. I'll spread it out for more contests for the podcast. How's that? that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone out there in podcast land wants to take those fifty to one odds on the Saigon Jokers, by the way, it'll all go to T four stuff. I just agree saying. with that. Yeah, that's true. We 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 definitely uh, we definitely announce more contests and uh, and things that we do. So. That's uh, that's one way to do it. We'd also be able to start the official Trinity Force podcast harem. It'd be great. 
<laughs> I know Podophobia is looking forward to that one. You know, another thing another thing that we should do as a podcast is we should go to um uh there is a fantasy LOL fantasy League of Legends site for uh similar to fantasy football. Uh and we should go and all all pick our pick our favorite players and uh and see where we go with this and see how well we do. Yeah, you see that doesn't work cuz my favorite players aren't actually on teams. I don't think I could pick the Rain Man in that league. <laughs> <laughs> my team would be like the rain man Hashinshin, like oh zingy's on a team now that works um i'd have like locust because locust is on every team but no team at the same time although i hear he might join yeah, curse right? depends on bad elements does and then uh you know i i need like one more player i don't know who i'd go with let's go with chris because chris is everywhere and no one likes him you want to you throw any more rumors out there? Because that that's pretty good. Yeah. Right? Got a couple of rumors for players going on. And, you know, and you know this is going to be funny because, um, you know, we still don't know how teams are qualifying for Season 3, those that haven't qualified yet. Like, all of these teams that are in the World Finals are automatically qualified for Season 3 and, and those games that are going to be done. But the rest of the open qualification areas... We don't know how teams are going to qualify for that. We've only known that Riot is going to make them qualify in some sort of tournament for them. So it really is interesting to me to know how they're going to qualify. And then all of these free agents of players that are still active in the community, the Locust, the Rain Man, you know, others, how will teams fare and shape out from there? I'm really, really interested to see because I think... Um, there's going to be a lot of maneuvering to put the team together that you want to qualify for season three because obviously being salaried by Riot is huge. Oh, I have a team a put together, all right. Do you now? <laughs> yeah, I got to find. But the it. Rain Man can't go on any team, Tom. I'm sorry about your luck, but he just doesn't fit very he plays, well in it. He, and... he plays Jace, he plays Timo, and he plays Yorick. He doesn't need to play anything else. <laughs> He needs to play something that actually, I mean, besides Jace, that actually hard carries and doesn't need red buff. Listen, the, <laughs> the core Rain Man build is you start with boots, you pick up the Phage because it's the most damaging item in the game, and then you pick up the Spirit Visage because that's good. Then you go back and buy your red buff, because and then you carry the game. You buy the red buff. You nice. buy your red buff. He's so buy good, he <laughs> buys red buff. Also, um, actually... So uh, go uh, ahead, Satir. I was going to ask uh, you a question after that. For anyone who's keeping track of Optimus's Tom Dream Team, it has uh, three top lane players who really don't play <laughs> anything else. So <laughs> no, 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 that's no, 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 no. Pretty well I, so far. I've got this. Don't worry. I need to find it. I posted it on his Facebook wall. I need to find it. Well, you know, as much as I've been having fun with all of this Dream Team talk, I think we need to get to one last piece of information before this podcast ends. And I think that is the Kazix and Rengar interaction that Sotir so desperately wanted to talk about. So the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, I, I'm not super desperate about it, but it is one of the hotter topics around the league, I would believe. Well, I didn't mean you're desperate yes. about it. I mean, you had, you had spoken like you'd really wanted to talk yes, about I, it. Yes, so I, I feel like it has to be mentioned. So essentially what Riot is doing is making Kha'Zix, who will be the next champion out, released, presumably, and Rengar have some sort of interaction, kind of like Volley Bear and Zillion do. But it's going to be more than just, you know, special emotes or, you know, extra gold or whatnot. Um, apparently once Kha'Zix and Rengar hit level 16 and then they kill each other or even get an assist on the kill, they get a rather significant bonus. Um, Rengar, for instance, gets like, he can't lose stacks on his Bone Tooth Necklace. There, I think it changes to the head of Kha'Zix and Kha'Zix gets another evolution point. So that is pretty exciting. Um, there's a lot of kind of like drama over the forums and apparently the rest of the Trinity Forest podcast isn't, hasn't been ke keeping up with that because they weren't like as excited about it as I was. But the story is, you know, some people are Pieces. worried that this is going to be a balance issue. Um, and Morello is just kind of making fun of everyone who thinks it's going to be a balance issue. He's like, nope, we're, we're not too worried about that. We have no plans on changing it. It is going to be released, you know, in kind of a similar, you know, form as it is right now. So they're not going to remove that. It's going to be another unique aspect of the game, which I really like. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to affect balance too, too much, but it certainly will play a role in the game if you happen to have a Kha'Zix on one team and a Rengar on the other. Could you ask for more if you're Riot, though, the fact that they're talking, you know, this is being a good discussion point and they're all discussing it and talking about it? I mean, I, I don't know if you could ask anything else for it when you make a champion to get everybody else discussing it and talking about it. That's exactly what you want. So in, in a way, it's, it's kind of a bonus for exactly what Riot wants. 
<laughs> yeah, it is exactly what Riot wants, and Riot is, you know, doing their part too, because I think this is what a lot of players want, and they're giving feedback to the concerns about it, which is always nice, even though Morello does it in kind of a you know, unusual trolley fashion. <laughs> um, you know, I think people appreciate that, you know, the developers are on the forums and are, like, actively answering questions if you have, like, a legitimate gripe, which, you know, I think that gripe is pretty legitimate. Oh, is it really going to affect the balance in the gameplay of the game? Um, I think that's worth paying attention to, and Morello has paid attention to it and, you know, responded and doesn't think it's going to be a big problem. Of course... This is all overlooking the fact that Rengar and Kha'Zix will never be played together because Rengar will be banned, you know, permanently. So you're only going to get them in normal games, Rengar, mm-hmm. that is. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. kind of the biggest balance issue right now. He has been banned early and often. Um, oh, and his AP ratios, he's hurt so hard. So, Tia, were you playing with your team earlier today? Was that who I was watching? Yeah. Okay, your Rengar was insane. Yes. He was 2v1-ing the jungler and the top lane. Like, like it was nothing. Like, his sword cut through, like, a hot knife through butter. He, and he was AP, and he had a, what do you have? Uh, DFG. Haunting guys and a DFG. Right. And he was 2v1-ing everybody by just running in and out of the bush. With, and it's a .8 ratio. They hardly nerfed it. And Rengar is still just running wildly through people, if you know what you're doing. I just think it's so silly. I mean... It was a pretty big nerf because they essentially took a you know point four of an AP ratio, but on the other hand they made it so you can you know cast it more smoothly. Um, so it's certainly something that's still viable, still probably really annoying to fight against, and uh, you know I think it's disappeared from solo queue right now because people are going towards the AD, which does you know ridiculous damage as well if you just build a Trinity Force on an AD Rangar and he jumps out at you and queues you and you know. I don't know. That that almost insta gives AD carries as well. So you have two really great options on him right now, in addition to the fact that he has incredible ganks and has invisibility and can split push and get away and, and all that sort of stuff. So certainly something Riot probably needs to pay attention to a little bit more in the next couple of I am of glad they they I'm glad they banned him for the world championships though, with with all the ways mm-hmm. that he's been dominating everywhere. It's like, yeah, okay. I know MacNoon's not happy about that because MacNoon was absolutely destroying with him when the qualifiers from Korea, but uh, yeah, it's probably needed to be needed to be done. Um, Pone, do you want to go through this question real quick, and we'll because uh, I think it could be answered pretty quickly if we do it. Oh yes, the question we got from the podcast. Yes. Few, uh, I want to say it was maybe two weeks ago we got this question that came in. And we unfortunately didn't get to it. Like we say every time, we will get to your questions, so please continue to submit them at feedback at trinityforcepodcast dot com. On to the question. We get uh, we get asked. I had another question. What are some good ways to avoid being counterpicked when you're in a draft game? What roles should we first pick to avoid being heavily countered? Uh, well, if you guys figure this one out, let me know because I get countered in blind pick. So Terry knows about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quickly, support jungle especially is 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 one that I I think is is not something that the other team will look to particularly counter if you pick first. But normally there are a set of a set of champions that aren't countered easily uh, when you first pick them. I know Shen is one that we see in a lot of games that isn't isn't necessarily countered quickly. I know Morgana is another one in, in just basic rank games that we see that isn't countered very easily uh, unless you're going to try and play a Talon mid or something to that effect. But there there are certain champions that you can get away with. I think Sotir can speak better t- for uh, some of the options, but I. I support and then certain champions that are just universally good to have uh that aren't necessarily banned are always good like rengar was definitely one for a while there if he's not banned you're picking now yeah i think freak always gets excited when you see those ambiguous first couple of picks like an udir for instance who used to be really popular and should still be very strong by for all intents and purposes, uh, in the top lane and in the jungle. We see him almost always go in the jungle now, but he actually can match up against a number of bruisers very, very well in the top lane. Um, so you can do that. You can pick champions that are, you know, can swap roles, essentially, um, as your first couple of picks. But yeah, mm. AD carry, support, really good. Jungle, Nunu. Yeah, Nunu is a perfect example of, you know, that, because he can go anywhere, and, uh-huh. and he's hard to counter just about anywhere too so yeah. not only do you uh you know do you get the added bonus of you know you can put him anywhere on the team if they do try to counter him but he's so hard to counter that they might have to go with a fringe pick in the first place if they feel like he's going top uh for instance 
Um, but yeah, certainly AD carry support, those tend to be the safer roles, but you can definitely counterpick those. Jungling, as Hornet said, certainly, you know, one of the safer things to early pick because you're not going to get countered in the same fashion. You're not going to be, you know, constantly toe to toe with the enemy jungler, but you still have to be careful because if they, you know, if you pick a Maokai, for instance, and they go Shivana, or they go someone who can really clear the jungle quickly and has a lot of early presence. Well, yes, you have great CC as Maokai, but if you get counter ganked, or yeah, counter ganked essentially, um, that's really going to end up against your favor, and they can potentially run you know through your through your jungle. And so there certainly are counter picks to junglers, mainly just based on you know jungling speed. You know, if they pick a slower a more utility oriented jungler you can pick a faster one who tends to do more damage and will win those little duels in the jungle um but it is it's hard it's an art and i don't think anyone has got it down and, and one of the interesting thing that I, I i like you can't always do this but there are certain ap mids that also can double as really good supports lux is a good example of this zyra recently um I, I find it as it's it's interesting when you first pick them because, well, are they going to be mid or are they going to be support or we're not really sure how this is going to work. Um, you know, it's just it's just one of those setups where it's kind of interesting. And another thing, uh, when's the last time we saw Oriana as a support? Because wasn't she originally built as a support and then turned out, you know, she's a much better overall kit for mid than anything else. It, it, I thought she was built to support when she first came out. I I don't know about that. I mean, certainly she has supporting aspects, and I think she was built as like the hybrid AP support. Um, but it's it's hard to say. And Zyphorus, I'm pretty sure, was the creator of her, and he always makes things overpowered. Um, so if you make something overpowered, <laughs> it's going to be an AP, you know, middle as opposed to a support. But we've seen that with every essentially, you know, support. They're like, oh, send a middle, build AP on them. They'll do really well. <laughs> um, so I, I think it was kind of like they were trying to fit both both roles in there but you know they kind of fell off that calling her a support really quickly when people were like oh no you still haven't given us a support champion for like two years uh, yeah. it's like i don't really think she falls into that but um she can go bottom of course her ball does give that extra ar and mr it's pretty nice of course so is morgana supposedly so yeah there's all kinds of ways that they kind of mold into something different well i mean having been a very big advocate of support Oriana in the bottom lane. You can't also forget that her uh, command attack will give you vision of the brushes to give you brush control. You also can't forget that her dissonance works as a speed up and a slow down. So you can pair it in a kill lane with Garen and he runs really, really fast. And um, <laughs> on the other hand though, we've also seen characters like oh. Zillion and Morgana that we usually see as AP mid characters also being in that bottom lane. Now you guys were talking about Lux before. Morgana even more so recently just because of the utility of her dark binding and her ult and her her black shield in team fight presence and when you think about it it's one of the better ways to protect an a an ad carry is hey you want to die my ad carry i'm going to activate this skill that makes sure that you guys are going to get stunned if you stay too close i'm going to root one of you in place and if you want to try to cc him i'm going to make him completely immune to that not to mention the fact that when you're playing footsies in the bush with the enemy the enemy support character it's pretty much like having a blitzcrank on the team that doesn't endanger your own ad carry so i know monomaniac especially has been running a lot of uh bottom lane support morgana you know it's not something we're going to see at worlds because monomaniac is not there but maybe one of the other teams has kind of caught on to it but there's been more experimentation opposite ways whereas it was like you guys mentioned support characters going into the ap role now it's AP characters going into the support role, and then of course you can't count out like old timey favorites uh, from like elements like support Fiddlesticks or support yeah. Yorick, or we've even seen support Jace like Chowster and uh, Lustboy have been playing. AD Ezreal mid, AD Corky top. No, I think if you come down to it, well, first of all, Tom, we can't listen to anything you ever say because you said Cinder's broken with. She Wee! is broken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is obviously not broken the bad. Truth wait, at wait, all. wait, 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 Bro wait. Broken. Hold awful. on. She is broken. I never specified how, which way of broken. <laughs> someone needs, pedal, someone pedal, needs pedal, to bring pedal, her. Pedal, pedal, back pedal. Someone needs to bring her to an auto repair shop. Make it so her W can fling over walls in Summoner's Rift properly, because half the time it does, half the time it doesn't. It's even worse when you're trying to than when you're trying to rocket jump with your stun and you just fail at it. Hers sometimes just doesn't go over the wall. Uh, and you also kind of have to uh, rework the casting time on her W because there's a weird delay on it. But I think she has potential. I think she's got potential. She's not good, but she's got potential. 
job. Right, well, thanks for that. I I just kind of want to walk into a little bit of just a tiny bit of top lane here when you're you know your fourth pick, your fourth and fifth pick, and they still have their last pick to pick, and they can counter your top lane. You just kind of have to learn every single matchup. There's no way you can stop yourself entirely from being counterpicked, and you have to keep that in mind. So pick a champion that's either harder to counterpick or a champion that you know can win with a gank if you're playing in a range fives, or be like Wicked and just always play Aurelia and know every single matchup and win. Yeah, play Jace I mean, or that, Aurelia. That's always an option. Game over. Right. Yeah, I can't really think of anything. Like, I love playing Jace because I feel like every matchup I have is at least decent for him, if not amazing. Yorick was the only bad one. And I don't know how and, the mana costs have changed that around and the ghoul speed. That's what I was going to ask you earlier. <laughs> oh, I actually have not played him since the remake. He, he was my main, but uh, I wasn't that good at him. <laughs> so I figure the nerf's probably taking him out of viability for me. But he's still probably one of the better choices against Jace, uh, someone who doesn't have sustain. Because obviously York does have that sustain and that range to counter him. Isn't it kind of funny how we can even even if it if it's a perceived nerf bat, it's like almost like they fall out of flavor no matter what because Riot touched them. Yep. I almost I almost feel like we there are champions who are just like completely forgotten about because they get the touch of the nerf bat, and then all of a sudden nope, no, not viable anymore because well, Riot touched them and nerfed them. Oh man, then, so so Tish should talk about Evelyn with that one. Yeah, really, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those things where it's it's. I want to say that we almost rediscover the champion some uh, like month or two later, and then realize, oh well, the champion actually isn't that bad, even though they got touched in the nerf bat. They're actually not that bad. Yep. Well, I think a lot of the times it's not even the nerf bat they get touched maybe they buff them too much kind of go with the evelyn thing or not too much they buff them and then people play them once or twice don't know how to play the champion same thing with new champions and yeah re- and decide their own well this champion wasn't the good the first time i played him or i played him in a bot game and i went four eleven and zero but he's broken <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about i was waiting for somebody to laugh at that i do i do you would but uh, yeah, yeah people pe- people just need to quit jumping to conclusions, just like we do. I know a few weeks ago I had played Saint Vicious's, and uh, he made a quick fifteen second vlog about Rengar being awful. And then I posted it at the end of the podcast, and like the next week, Rengar was OP as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and so that you know that just made me laugh, like in general, how how that all goes down. It does tend to happen. People you know overreact to those nerfs, underreact to buffs, and you know tend to believe that champions are not as good as they actually are when they're first released. But we've actually had this thing, Rengar, Lee Sin, and Riven, these three champions who you know don't have any mana, um, primarily just uh, cooldown based, who come are released and they have a, like a unique skill set, a new way to play them, and are perceived to be really weak, and then they just get a little bit of a buff, and then suddenly they're brokenly overpowered. Um, so, seen that a couple times now. And I, I wonder if Riot is going to learn their lesson, so to speak, with that. <laughs> I don't think Riot's ever going to learn the lesson. I think they're just going to release them, listen to the feedback, or you know, see what happens when people get a hold of them after a couple of weeks, and then we'll just see where it goes. Riot, please. Because we, we were talking about earlier, um, all the champions that come out and don't have a mana cost, they just have cooldowns. Either they come out super broken, or they come out extremely underpowered, and then they're broken after they patch them. Right. And it seems like it happens every time with that kind of champion. Like they can never get a good feel. I will. I will give you. Out. I will give you one champion that I still think is so underpowered and still hasn't gotten enough love, and that's Victor. Ever since coming out, no. under, 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 buffed a little, not enough, buffed a little, still not enough, and still haven't seen him in major competitive play, unless Tom has some obscure game he can come up with from. A way long time ago. There was an IPL qualification match where he was picked, but the team, they won that game, then lost the next two, and there were some, I don't remember the name of the team, so not important. Just just as an example, or, uh, um, <laughs> I mean, there there are a few that just never get enough love, and it's like, okay, why, why, like, could, could that have helped a little bit? Uh, another example is uh, Sejuani. Any day now, you can give her a little bit more damage. She has CC, she can be utility, but she needs just a little more damage than the next to nothing that she has. I mean, I, there's just a couple of champions that I, I feel like they come out with, and they're just like they just ignore. Like, yeah, 
There weren't enough sales. We're not going to touch them. It's going to suck. <laughs> Iro- ironically, yeah. I could point out a very good Shizwadi game I saw from Monomaniac the other day. <laughs> well, that's Monomaniac, but, but what I'm saying is, is that you know some of these champions, do we expect to see the, either one of those champions at the finals? Hell Would it not no. be a complete surprise if we saw one of those champions? Hell yes. I, I mean, you know, the the only the only funny part is how much of a nerf bat Trindamir took. Oh god, <laughs> that's the only one to me that's really funny. When, He's when such I, a popular champion. When I think of Trindamir and I think of how badly he is, like how bad he is now, I just think of when Legion went to MLG Anaheim and they got a sub. His name was Hacker V Two, and he was number one on the solo queue ladder. And he was a jungler, and they needed to replace a lot of Mortis because a lot of Mortis was unable to go due to certain circumstances. So, Hacker came in and played Trindamir basically every single game, and all he did was die. He just, <laughs> he just couldn't do anything. It was like, okay, I'm going to play Trindamir. All right, we have this team composition. It's based off AOE. What do you want to do? Oh, I'm going to play Trindamir. All right, we have like a, <laughs> we have like a pull com. We're going to try to single out targets. Oh, I'm going to play Trindamir. And all he, I don't think I saw him with a kill all tournament. <laughs> That's, wow. that's the image I get of Trindamir whenever I think of Trindamir now. <laughs> was that and that was no, that was after the that was probably after the nerf uh, that that he took. But yeah, it's it's the the stats on him are atrocious for his win percentage in solo queue even are just really bad. And it, that's and by the way, kids, uh, solo queue is definitely not the be all end all. Uh, understand that 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 solo queue being the top of the solo queue ladder does not translate to being a good team. There's a distinct difference. There are a number of pros. Just look at the Rain Man. Uh, yeah. Rain Man's but, not near the top of solo queue. <laughs> are you kidding me? He loses too much. I know. Right. Well, he tro- too much trolling. Yeah, trolling way too much. But it's just one of those things that to, to really understand that, um, you know, we've had our first our first guy make 3K in the solo queue ra- ladder, I believe, in EU West. Frelin Lord. Uh, Frelin Lord, right? Right. And, yeah, Frelin Lord. You know. He's on a team, and I believe he plays AP mid for that team, but they've not really done a whole lot. Uh, it doesn't translate to good team play for how good you are in the solo queue ladder. So uh, it's a whole different ball game to play in a really good fives team. And I'm kind of hoping that we see we see more and more um, teams. You know, people play a team orient the team oriented type of game uh, when all of these major tournaments that they were become minor tournaments like IEM and, and some others be due to, you know, season three being, you know, essentially leagues in the region for the top teams and all the rest of the teams get to play in these sort of, you know, what are be called minor events, but they really are kind of major, you know, they're really the good exposure for people to get into. Mm-hmm. You know, only time will tell what happens. And just like this podcast, I think we've, we have to wait till next week to see where any of our predictions go and see where you know what's going to happen. Actually, this next week's podcast is before the finals, isn't it? It yep. is. Oh man, I think we did predictions a little, uh, week too early. You asked <laughs> for them. You got them. I'll tell you That's what. Right. I... We'll do our research this week because we'll have oh. all of our previews out from GG Chronicle by then, and I'm pretty sure I'll be convinced by some other articles as to what are the teams that might be coming with, but I'm really looking forward to some of the teams that I don't even know anything about. Like, uh, you know, I don't know anything about Saigon Jokers. I'm kind of interested to see and hear like what the team is, who they're about. And I think that'll be the really good part for kind of exposing that team that's made it to the world finals that nobody seems to know. Yeah. We'll find out guys. Keep close attention to ggchronicle.com. As all of these previews come out, Saigon Jokers will be out very shortly. We'll have Moscow 5, Team Solo Mid, uh, Invictus, Najin Sword, all the different Moscow, I said Moscow 5. Um, you know, all the other teams that we mentioned today will all have little previews for them. I wouldn't say little. I think we hit the stat was like 13,000 words <laughs> with four articles. Oh. And, and we have 12 articles coming out. So, you know, look for us, guys. We're out there, ggchronicle.com. We're taking care of this. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast this week and last week. We had, we actually had triple the amount of listens last week on episode number 46 than we did the week prior. Wow. And any week prior to that, besides interviews. So, you guys have definitely put us out there. You guys have made us better. That's why I'm going to continue at the end of the podcast and at the beginning of the podcast, tell you how much I love you all. So, <laughs> slut. As soon as I get a check from Audible, we'll be doing another um, giveaway. I'm not sure what we should give away this time, though. I mean, everyone loves RP and all that good you stuff. You should give away you know Ponophobia hugs. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give out a little clue here. Because we've given out our predictions, I'd like somebody to actually pick out we'll have a, a tournament bracket. And we should have a contest on how the tournament bracket will actually pan out once we figure out how the uh, uh, how the things go. And if somebody can predict uh, the semifinal matchups and the final matchups, maybe we can give them a prize. So I guess I don't think it's going to be that easy to actually pick out how the how the semifinals and finals are going to go. Oh, sure, man. Yeah. We're going to see Saigon Jokers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Spoiler alert. All right, alert. guys. You heard it here. We'll figure out a contest next week for you, so... You know, we'll we'll start. Well, the problem is if we do it next week, we have to actually come up with one right now. And we're doing it live while we do this. So, well, no, no, no. Um, what I'm saying is, is that we'll come up. We we'll come up by Tuesday because it doesn't start till Thursday next week, and we'll come up with uh, we'll come up with details for it. But I think we could really come up with something good that could get you guys involved uh, because we know you're going to watch the season two finals uh, more than likely if you're listening to us. So, uh, you know, look out for it. I'm sure I'll come up. I will. Uh, be able to come up we'll be able to come up with something good for you and then we'll uh we'll see uh how it goes and um if some if a number of people can pick it correctly we'll uh, we'll give out prizes like we said there we go guys we'll figure it out go ahead and listen to us next week um i'm gonna make so tier take us out this week oh my goodness are you really i thought i was <laughs> yep. i thought so i had yes, immunity sir. to being taken out uh all right <laughs> Well, we are the Trinity Force Podcast. If you would like to reach us for whatever reason, please phone us at 203-49-FORCE, which is also 493-6723. Also, please email us at feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com, and our Twitter is tforcepodcast slash ggchronicle. I'm LOL Soter, Escapon, your escapone right or are you actually you got it yeah escapone and he tweets way too much so if you are interested in the in the twitter verse <laughs> certainly get in touch with him and uh is there anything else i have to do to take us out mr phonophobia no i love i love your voice don't forget to follow at hornet ajc and at optimus tom they don't tweet all that often <laughs> they just kind of i know i know hornet's just on there to make fun of everybody that he can <laughs> including money chris i am and, the and best myself. troll on twitter available let me tell you the, and, and tom just retweets things and talks about staying up till four o'clock in the morning every yeah day, something so. like that tom tom has <laughs> great insider information that he's not going to share with you i do <laughs> actually so well, you know. only i 100 percent do <laughs> Well, guys, that'll do it for this week's podcast. Again, episode number 47, 48 be coming up. 50 is coming up really soon. Um, I believe there's talk about bringing Ran Hurt back for just for episode number 50. He won't really have much to say, but um, if he does come back, we'll at least have some of the crew. <laughs> and that'll do it for this week's podcast. So we'll see you guys all next week. I came to demonstrate the theory of a rocket blast to your skull. Compared to me, you've got the brain chemistry of an animal. You're poorly designed for this. My mind is simply beautiful. You've never seen a champ like me. My tactics so unusual. To deterministic world, I calculate your every move. Premises manipulated to a conclusion using complex proofs. I'm the best you've ever seen. Number one hero. You can find my IQ on a part of the bell curve with the axis value approaches zero. Easily cover the lane. Turret drop machine gunner. Better inventions than a coyote. More elusive than the road runner. Next step in evolution. It's clear that I've progressed. It's also clear that you're so dumb. You probably fail a Turing test. I'm not impressed because I could see that you're a simple rube You barely move at all, my E is MC cube I hope you brought some lube, I'm here to violate you Stick you in my centrifuge and spin until I separate you I drop turrets, I drop bodies, I pick up wins I theorize your defeat, so let's begin I kite hard and I lob grenades You wanna chase through the turrets and it's time for an upgrade I drop turrets, I drop bodies, I pick up wins I theorize your defeat, so let's begin And it's time for an upgrade Welcome to expert laning Attendance is enforced I hope you took the prereqs This is a 5,000 level course First few lectures Most attendees drop They become discontent The failure rate for those who stay Is roughly 100% I never meant for you To misconstrue your chance to win I made it clear I'm here to own you Time and time again You can just hang by your tower For the short time that it remains Or maybe just stand in your base And stay safe until I push it all the lanes so I can smash all your brains You're dumber than you started A fool in his nexus We'll soon be parted I'm bringing damage Like quantum mechanics You can observe the effects But you're just too dumb To understand it I drop turrets I drop bodies I pick up wins I theorize your defeat So let's begin I kite hard And I lob grenades You wanna chase through the turrets And it's time for an upgrade I drop turrets I drop bodies I pick up wins I 
The Trinity Force Podcast is brought to you by ggchronicle.com.